If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. stop you right there because that fucking laugh okay continue somewhere somewhere it's an island and we soon learn they control it all digitally anyway but yeah somewhere on skull island all y'all want movie why somewhere when it's all still skull island he didn't somewhere the title of the first movie it was just kong skull island not kong somewhere on skull island I don't really see the issue here, Jer. It's an uncharted island. What do you want them to say, Nova Scotia Skull Island? It's not like this place has points of interest that people would know. I think Jeremy's point is that this is all a simulation and the somewhere should notate that. Yeah, I picked up on that, Stan. The issue is that this building is still somewhere on Skull Island. Oh sh they put Kong in the cabin in the woods. One sin for a pop culture reference that isn't a sin of the movie, and another for suggesting Kong being in Cabin in the Woods isn't awesome as f and something that isn't possible in that reality. Also, if Kong knows he's in a cage, why doesn't he throw the tree lower, where he can go grab it and smash on the fake sky wall next to it? Why does he throw his angry I know you have me Truman Show trees so high in the sky? The implication here is that Kong is aware he is in a containment facility, but not that he wants or even knows he can leave. Skull Island is about to be destroyed by a perpetual storm system, so maybe he's just expressing his frustration a bit. Besides, all he did was destroy a part of the screen. The movie doesn't give us enough information on the durability of this place, other than Kong has thus far been unable to leave. That would then imply the building, not the projection, is at least sturdy enough to contain him government containment was right there well yeah monarch isn't a youtube channel pretending to be satirical also outpost 236 <laughs> you have 236 outposts checking out giant beasts in secret <laughs> this would have played better if you'd named it outpost 16 christ apparently jeremy hasn't been paying attention to the past couple of movies in this franchise because he'd have known that monarch has been around for over 100 years as they have been tracking kaiju since then i would think 200 outposts dedicated to this purpose would be conservative Dr. Andrews, did you see that? How could she miss seeing it? Maybe she could have been asleep, taking a piss, pooping, putting on the makeup she's wearing. It's entirely possible to miss big, obvious things, Jeremy. I mean, look at you and your channel. We need to start thinking about off-site solutions. The island is the one thing that's kept him isolated. If he leaves, Godzilla will come for him. So wait, what's the problem again? Kong can't leave Skull Island unless you take him off of it. And as long as he chills on the island, Godzilla won't f with him. I know you're worried about the biodome around the island getting destroyed, but Kong can't leave the island on his own, can he? They also don't want Kong to die. The guy is enormous and famously tough, but even he can't survive a Category 5 tropical cyclone. The whole theory of an ancient rivalry stems from Iwi mythology. I'm very happy you got to pull out your Iwi knowledge for no reason in this exchange. I I mean, we all know they'd fight if they saw each other. That's common sense. A Godzilla-Kong fight is inevitable, not because of some Iwi mythology, but because of Warner Brothers' bottom line. So is Jeremy, the creator of CinemaSins, right now saying he doesn't require an explanation for the Godzilla vs. Kong matchup? That's like Sonic being a fan of snails or LeBron James not complaining about a foul call. Completely out of character. He's gotten too big over time. This environment won't sustain much longer. It's too unstable. Why is it too unstable? Maybe you can stop letting little girls near King Kong and showing the voodoo dolls you made of him. The mother is taking a shower and about to go hunting, completely happy with his life until she showed up. I see CinemaSins has begun hamming it up in recent videos, attempting to play up the... <coughs> comedic aspect of this series. I still find this sin as something wrong with CinemaSins because they played a scene of them saying this environment is unstable and then went on a rant that had nothing to do with that scene. I'll remind you that their videos are titled Everything Wrong With and my question is, how are their lame jokes something wrong with the movie? The defenders of CinemaSins like to have it both ways and defend their jokes saying it's all a joke but at the same time getting mad at me for poking holes in their serious criticism. Which is it? Is it all a joke where nothing is to be taken seriously? Or is it criticism that is infallible because a channel with 9 million subscribers said so? Handwriting, circling, 
Important notes, super focus, Egyptian doodles. Jeremy sings in a video cliche. It's weird that they call the dead monsters in this universe defeated. Like scientists created a world federation for monster fighting complete with rankings and title fights and betting. It's a movie called Godzilla vs. Kong, emphasis on the versus part. This is a world where giant kaiju fight each other. Defeated is the correct term, especially in Rodan's case where he was beaten but not killed. Besides, the word deceased is right there. Movie opens on a literal Mark Madness style monster bracket that leads to the final of Godzilla vs. Kong, and that's just stupid. If this is supposedly an NCAA bracket, Kong got here on some suspect fights because Godzilla did most of the f killing to make it into this mythical championship. I will give you some credit for this title screen being relatively out of chronological order, but this movie proves you wrong. Besides the fact that Kong only had one movie so far, meaning Godzilla has had more opportunities for fights, Kong killed the giant squid and at least three skull crawlers in that first movie. Before the big fight happens in this movie, Kong defeats two warbats in Hollow Earth. Kong kills more kaiju on screen than Godzilla does. All this screen is doing is showing the past and the future, which is totally fine for a title screen. No, don't eat that! Does he know this apple makes you look like an asshole too? The director said, let's make your character eat that other asshole's apple. It'll make you look like even more of an asshole. Two separate apple asshole sins for the same scene? You patting the sink out, bro? I think you're bad in the sink out. At this point, don't you know that you can't kill Godzilla like this? Why send pilots on this fruitless exercise unless you personally hate them? What are they supposed to do? Sit on their hands while Godzilla terrorizes cities and kills thousands of people? Anyway, the military is always spending billions on upgrading their arsenal. Their thinking is, perhaps we now have something that can penetrate Godzilla's tough hide, so let's at least try. Besides, we've seen Godzilla bleed before, and if it bleeds, we can kill it. While the damage was largely contained to the U.S. headquarters of Apex Cybernetics... Wow, that's weird. A monster that has protected us in the past went after one corporation, and we're not asking why that is. Godzilla must just hate all of humanity now for no reason. There's no other explanation for it, really. But that's exactly the issue. Up until this movie, Godzilla has avoided directly harming human beings. It has never mattered why he appeared. He was always careful to avoid killing humans that weren't a threat to him. In this movie, he gives about as many fucks as this guy. You say in big doo doo distant. 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 You 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 distant. Why else would Godzilla flash an intimidation display if there wasn't another Titan around? That podcast is filling your head with garbage. Did Kyle Chandler not learn anything from the last movie? I don't really care about this sin, especially because it's a setup for a pop culture reference gag. But what caught my attention was the botched editing here. CinemaSins, the 9 million subscriber channel, took a page out of The Birdman's, the channel with significantly less subscribers, and began subtitling the characters in these movies. You're probably thinking, wait, how do you know they're copying you? And the answer to that is the fact that they made them yellow and italicized, which is exactly how I did them, and I was doing it first. What does all this have to do with this particular sin? Well, in this scene, the subtitles are white and non-italicized, which wouldn't be a problem if the earlier subtitles in this video were too. Hint, they're not. Please don't you land. Despite a creepy guy sneaking into his office like this, he doesn't see any red flags to what this guy proposes next. That's a pretty vague sin. This creepy guy is famous and Dr. Lin knows him because he's in his line of work. I mean, this is like if you're a basketball coach and Michael Jordan breaks into your house and offers you the coaching job to the Hornets. You're not going to question it. You're going to accept that shit right after you stop peeing your pants. Magnetic imaging from one of our new satellites. Okay, did the movie just invent a way to see the Earth's inner core? Also, why does it look like a plasma ball? No, the movie didn't just invent this concept. This is how we know the Earth has a solid core in real life, by measuring the reflection of seismic waves during an event such as an earthquake. This particular method uses magnetism, which reaches the same conclusion as a seismograph, but through different means. You know, like a mid-engine car versus a front-engine car. But the question you ask is even sillier. Why does this look like a plasma ball? Dude, the movie literally explains that these are tunnels that the kaiju utilize to travel around the world. The first sin of this video is you implying you've already watched this movie before you sat down to write sins about it, so you're faking like you don't know the answer to this question already. Hell, Godzilla King of the Monsters explained that, and I know you saw it because I sent that video too. He talks about how his brother hit a patch of gravity in the Earth's core, a whole planet's worth, and is that in the last movie? King of Mobsters or whatever? I don't remember. And that maybe says something. Am I supposed to know who this brother is? King of Mobsters? 
Why are you pretending you haven't seen that movie? Why are you pretending that you haven't already watched this movie? What are you, six? What's with all the make-believe? The power source in Hollow Earth? It's there! We just need Kong to bring us to it! I honestly don't understand why they can't just take this awesome ship that Apex built and go look around for the power source first, before doing something insane like dragging Kong off his island to lead them there. If you've got all this rad imaging equipment, why can't you find this stuff on your own? Because they're on a timetable. Godzilla is destroying their facilities and killing people. You would think a sense of urgency in this situation would be a normal thing, Jeremy. In the scene where you were pretending not to have information you definitely do, the movie was explaining why they needed Kong. Are you guys familiar with genetic memory? It's a theory that all Titans share a common impulse to return to their evolutionary source. Like spawning salmon. Exactly. We're a, we're a homing pigeon. If this is the Titan's home, and this life force sustains them, a Titan could show you the way. Yeah. King Kong on this barge raises many questions, like how do they lift him? How do they get him on the outside of the habitat? What kind of tranquilizer knocks him out long enough for the raising, the carrying, and the chaining handcuffing? I'm sure this does raise many questions. My problem is every single one of yours should be obvious. They almost certainly lifted him with cranes like the ones in this scene. The kind of tranquilizer is irrelevant, but they do show that he is constantly being drugged while on this ship. What kind of tranquilizer? That's like asking what kind of nuts are those? These motherfucker! The myths say that their ancestors fought each other in a great war. The myths? The myths? Jeremy is implying that the word myth here implies the events the myths refer to didn't happen. As I had to explain to the Christians that get mad at me for referring to their wacky series of fables as Christian mythology, the word myth means stories that try to explain otherwise historical events. A myth doesn't automatically imply that something is untrue. I mean, Christian myths are, but still. It's not that I don't believe that Kong couldn't learn how to sign, it's just I feel like since Kong Skull Island took place in the 70s and we haven't seen Kong again until now, they really shortchanged us on his character development and everything that's happened in the last 40 or so years. There's like a whole movie missing that would have made this moment better. It's like the latest Planet of the Apes franchise starting with Dawn instead of Rise. It's not like that at all. This moment was supposed to be a surprise to the audience and serves to prove that Kong is not only intelligent, but can use spatial reasoning and demonstrates displacement. And being frank, this movie is Kong's movie. He receives basically all of the characterization that you're asking for. He's not a weirdo. He's a covert investigator, and he's the only one looking for the truth. I said the same thing to my roommates before answering a quick... Skip. He consumes a ton of bleach. He drinks bleach. Showers with it. You looked at him weird for even suggesting he drinks bleach, but you're the one who chose the word consume. You can't use the wrong word and be a dick when someone misunderstands what you say. Yeah, but consume doesn't always mean to ingest, Jeremy, unless you think the word consumer means someone who eats things like iPhones and cameras. Before we go any farther, tap or no tap. This guy with super important information only does business with people who shun tap water, but he takes their word for it, so you can be sure he's serious about it. Welcome to the wonderful world of conspiracy theorists. These unuseful ignorants believe all kinds of crazy shit, like gravity doesn't exist, that the sun and moon are the same size and rotate above a flat earth like this, that if a helicopter hovers in the same place for 12 hours, the earth should spin under it and the helicopter will land in a different country. Oh? All of these are flat earther talking points? Well, surely someone who doesn't trust tap water is smarter than those evolutionary dead ends. I think he targeted the Apex facility. I'm of the same opinion. I feel like everything in this conversation should already be established. He does a podcast, she listens to the podcast. Can we get to the part where you want to break into Apex now? Well, why don't you just do that? You have the power to skip this part of the movie and talk about what it does wrong, yet you're here meandering for the past seven minutes. At seven minutes, the original Cinema Sins would have been done and in the outtakes by now. We're not even at the first kaiju fight yet. I just want us to all step outside the movie right now for a second and look at that ridiculous three-step jacket collar. <laughs> and this is why we're still not at the first kaiju fight yet. The little girl with some weird special relationship to Kong is now going to sense Godzilla's approach like she's a f***ing magic eight ball or some sh Son, this little girl is deaf. She's feeling Godzilla's approach. I like how you're using the word sense here as if it's something mystical when the sense of touch is a thing almost all of us have. Well, all of us except this guy's penis. These dumbasses shoot 
artillery and or missiles at Godzilla, even though it's well established at this point that either A, they don't hurt him, or B, they actually make him stronger. The thing is, these weapons are being fired from a naval vessel. The Navy utilizes some of the most powerful weaponry humanity has ever created, so of course they're going to at least try fighting back. You want them to just sit on all of that artillery while Godzilla is ripping through their ships like paper? Look up saturation fire. Besides, there is evidence to support that these weapons have some sort of effect on him, because otherwise, there is no reason for Godzilla to even react to them. But he does. Think of ants crawling up your butthole. One? Who cares? A thousand? <laughs> okay, so Kong appears to be finally back up on... Jeremy thinks this part of the movie is boring. That's worth these many cents. <laughs> Kong was struggling with the handcuffs like crazy, but suddenly and without eating a magic mushroom, he doubled up in strength to break out of this metal collar. What CinemaSense is leaving out here is that the reason he was struggling was because he was being sedated, literally up to Godzilla taking him underwater. It's not part of the 50 cent bargain for Kong to throw a jet at Godzilla, but it's equally f***ing worthless. This is contradictory. Your logic was that the humans should already know of Godzilla's durability, but this is Kong's first interaction with him. Keep up with your own arguments, dude. Kong and Godzilla kill a ton of innocents here, but they get a pass, while Superman and Zod get taken to task. Hey, look at that. CinemaSins is a fan of the Birdman. You might think this deserves a send off, but let me ask you, if CinemaSins knows Birdman, why doesn't he listen to Birdman? Huh? Huh? <laughs> CinemaSins has taken to giving the movie 50 cents every time the humans shoot Godzilla with something. Their logic is as I stated earlier. They believe it to be ineffective. <laughs> ineffective. 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 This won't end until one of them submits. Thing my college girlfriend's roommate said while watching our first sex somehow made its way into the movie. Two cents. One for first sex, and another for thinking literally anyone wanted to hear that. Wait, this asshole's just leaving? Because they turned off the boats and Kong's taking an injury timeout? Surely Godzilla is smarter than that, right? Man, Zilla knows exactly how to inflate the runtime, doesn't he? Godzilla doesn't want to kill King Kong. He just wants to put him down so that he's no longer a threat. This is demonstrated twice in this movie. So they're just going to stand on this transport that's going over 600 miles an hour without being the least bit strapped in? I mean, I thought I was a badass on a subway train when I didn't have to hold onto the pole, but this is next level. Jeremy still doesn't understand how special relativity works. After the initial acceleration, which would put their asses up against a wall, their inertial frame of reference would stabilize with the crafts and they would have a relatively pleasant experience. Have you ever flown on a plane? Yeah, those things reach a cruising speed of five to 600 miles per hour, and you can walk up and down the aisle no problem. Sure, she is the only one that can talk to Kong, but I'm not sure that justifies bringing the first grader on the mission to the center of the f***ing Earth. Jeremy answers himself cliché, but also, Gia is their trump card because Kong refuses to let anything happen to this little girl. She's like Kaiju Kevlar. Let me see if I have this correct. They are currently inside the center of the Earth, which they correctly hypothesized was some kind of habitable, hollow, New Zealandish place where these giant titan animals might have originally come from? Are you trying to make me use my imagination? Because that's not gonna work. I think this sin perfectly encapsulates everything wrong with cinema sins. They actually believe they are required to use their imaginations while watching a f***ing movie. A movie, the thing that shows you everything it wants you to know. How do you hate books so much yet watch movies like you're reading? Hey, that kaiju movie ripped off that robot kaiju thing from the other kaiju movie. This man believes Mechagodzilla is a ripoff. That's worth these many cents. This is why Godzilla attacked the Apex facility. They're trying to replace him. Why? Does Godzilla have a union job? Besides the joke that fell flatter than Wendy Williams' ass, they're trying to build something that can compete with other kaiju so that they don't have to rely on Kong or Godzilla. That's why the company's name is Apex. Get it? Dude, you have spent the last five minutes complaining about conventional weaponry being used against Godzilla, and you're here asking why? Godzilla just made an abrupt change in direction. He's moving very fast. Projection show he's likely headed to Hong Kong. When I went to watch this movie called Godzilla vs. Kong, I expected it to be a fight versus King Kong, not Hong Kong. This movie is like John Carter's journey to the center of Pacific Skull Island ascending. No, it's not. Oh, he has a stormbreaker, but with a testicle handle. Jeremy says boner buddies. It's the axe. 
It's drawing radiation from the core like it's charging. You see, this axe needs a charge so it glows blue. Then Kong finds a place in the floor to charge his axe and the floor lights up. Why it decides to do that now instead of 20 minutes ago when Kong picked up the axe is beyond me, but it's perfect timing for everything that's going on in the movie, so who am I to judge? Oh, that's what we do here. Sorry. The axe lights up because of Godzilla's presence. Dude, watch the movie. So Godzilla responds to the energy call from Hollow Earth, and his death breath reaches all the way down there through all the crust and mantle and all that sh and just coincidentally doesn't hit the good guys? Are you f***ing joking? I'm having a hard time understanding what the point of this sin even was. Was it about his atomic breath reaching Hollow Earth, or it not harming the protagonists? Because I can't tell which one is stupider. The movie clearly shows Godzilla aiming for a particular spot, and that spot happens to be the throne of Kong's people. So why would the protagonist be in that spot for literally any reason? Also, is the movie saying that Godzilla's directly over the energy source in Hollow Earth? Or, um, under it? Or am I not thinking fourth dimensionally enough to understand how he can do this? In space, there is no such thing as up or down, or any direction for that matter. The reason we have terms like up or down is related to our position on the Earth's surface and gravity. Gravity causes objects with less mass to be attracted to an object with a larger mass, and those lesser objects will fall towards the center of that larger object. On Earth, this translates to the down direction for one person being the up direction for someone else on the other side of the planet. So technically, this sin has no meaning, but from Godzilla's perspective, it's under him. This fight ain't half bad, but who are we supposed to root for? And there's no way either of them are gonna die. So this fight has about as much at stake as the ones in Captain America Civil War. Likes the fight, sends it anyway. And I love the justification too. He doesn't know who to root for. You would think a movie making it difficult to choose a side would be a win because it has accomplished its goal of making its characters nuanced. But no, Jeremy needs his hand held, so I'll help him out. Godzilla is clearly this movie's villain. They have done all the legwork to make you sympathize with the more human-like King Kong, and Godzilla has been killing humans, people with families, and people that care about them. And one last thing. Civil War absolutely had stakes. It wasn't about the characters dying, dumbass. It was about the fracturing of the relationships that had been built up into that point. The events of that movie are literally why the Avengers lose to Thanos. Saying Civil War had no stakes in 2021 is like saying Batman v Superman would outgrow Civil War. Kong's energy axe sucks in Godzilla's energy breath, and we are learning about these capabilities on the fly. I guess it's fun. Considering Kong's axe is made from a scale of one of Godzilla's ancestors, it's obvious the movie is suggesting Godzilla and his race are impervious to atomic breath radiation and are instead powered by it. The previous movie explicitly stated that Godzilla is empowered by nuclear blasts. This didn't come from nowhere. Looks like round two goes to Kong. How do you know that it's round two? You just got here. So did King Kong, numbnuts. Or did you just forget they all came out of the hole together? Godzilla had left us in peace. You provoked him into war. By building a robot Godzilla? That's not a provocation for war. Yes, they connected the robot Zilla to the skull of the dead Gidmore Akianistan, but if you're gonna start telling me all these titans can mind sense when other titans are being experimented on, I'm gonna tell you to lick my shoe. Preferably just after I remove it from your ass. How is it even remotely possible to watch the fourth movie in this franchise and still not understand that the kaiju emit radiation the other kaiju are attracted to? That's literally the plot point for King Kong in this movie. It's not that I don't enjoy monsters beating monster ass. I've seen it so many times by now, and neither of these two have provoked much of an emotional connection in me. It's just punching and bright lights and loud roars. It does nothing for me. And that's a sin for you, because clearly you're dead inside. <laughs> This is basically the giant monster version of the villain expositing their entire plan to the hero instead of just killing them and ending it already. Or this is the movie showing you what I told you earlier. Godzilla doesn't want to kill King Kong. He wants him to submit. I thought he was a killbot designed to kill Godzilla, but then he killed his maker and is now up here killing humans. And even though Godzilla was just killing humans himself, I guess he's going to switch sides solely because of a metal doppelganger showing up? Is that what's really happening? Well, I guess Kong and Zilla will kill the bot and fist bump and divvy up the earth into halves that they can eat to rule? This man has been watching this movie, making jokes about the Ghidorah skull, literally saw Ghidorah take over Mechagodzilla's body, and is still asking why is Mechagodzilla killing humans? <laughs> and if that wasn't enough, he then asks, why does Godzilla change sides? As if the entire reason Godzilla has been sticking his dick in humanity's ass wasn't because of Apex housing Ghidorah's skull. 
you know, the thing piloting Mechagodzilla right now. Missiles don't work on Godzilla, but they still built a ton of missiles into the Mechagodzilla. Says missiles don't work shows footage of the missiles working. Literally the end of the last Harry Potter movie, only with giant lizards instead of pliant wizards. Jeremy sends a beam struggle. Besides, a better reference would have been Vegeta's Gallic Gun versus Goku's Kaioken Kamehameha. She signs Godzilla not enemy, and that's great and all, but when did she and Kong work out a sign for Godzilla? The sign Gia is using is roughly the sign for dinosaur. See? That's teamwork. Jeremy ruins music in a video cliche. 